Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Jimmy. I'm the host of the show. Thank you. For, thank you for joining us on day one of Joe Biden's European vacation. This is the president's first joint jaunt. Oh, first joint. He finally he got really high on Air Force One. <laughs> I'm trying to picture Joe Biden on Air Force One. He seems like the type of guy who travels with a neck pillow and then <laughs> spends the whole flight talking to the stewardess about his favorite restaurant in Cincinnati or something. <laughs> but Joe Biden is in Europe for his first overseas trip. His itinerary is packed. Eight days, three countries, no malarkey. They were originally <laughs> supposed to stop in malarkey, but they decided no. Right now, Biden is in England, and unlike the last time, a president visited England. This time, when he rings the doorbell, the queen won't have to pretend she's not home. Queen's not here! <laughs> the queen went to the mall or something. <laughs> Biden will meet with the queen on Sunday, and he's scheduled to have a private meeting in Geneva next week with Vladimir Putin. I hope he brings his dog Major to that one. That's, that's the Russian P-tape I really want to see. Biden, Joe Biden is hoping to repair some of the damage uh, Trump did to our relationships with our allies. He's calling this the less shoving, more loving tour. And it's exciting for America. It's like introducing our new fiance to all our friends. You know, we haven't been as close over the last few years because our, you know, our ex was a loud, lying cheater who never picked up the check. But now we got a new guy. He's a little boring. He's not exactly George Clooney, but he treats us well, and he doesn't throw Starburst fruit chews at the other world leaders, so it should be nice. <laughs> the, the news coverage of Biden's trip got off to a bumpy start. The White House press plane was delayed almost seven hours today because a swarm of cicadas flew into the engine of the plane. If this was a movie, the government would have to go to a cabin in the woods to convince Sully Sullenberger to do one last job. But <laughs> these poor cicadas, they come out once every 17 years. They're like, hey, guys. We're like, gross, get away from us. And then they're, well, but we just want to go check out the engine of this plane. And they're so out of touch. You know, they haven't been out above ground since 2004, and it really shows. I mean, look at this one. Ed Hardy shirt, Von Dutch hat. He's using a Blackberry, I think. Oh, he's wearing one of those Livestrong bracelets. It's embarrassing. You know, as if uh, COVID and the cicadas weren't enough, health officials are now saying we could be headed for the worst flu season ever. Remember the flu? Oh. I missed the flu. I Barely anyone got the flu this year because of all the masks and the social distancing, but now that things are opening up, they're saying it may return with a vengeance. I don't know what it's so mad about. We had a little thing with another virus. So calm down. It was... <laughs> The good news, at least on the COVID front, is vaccines for children as young as six months old are expected to be available in the fall. Unfortunately for parents, most kids are anti-vaxxers. I mean, name one toddler who ever willingly got a shot. There aren't any. They're going to have to have a lollipop lottery or something to get... Right now, our vaccines are at risk of going to waste. Millions of Johnson & Johnson vaccines expire at the end of this month, and the government is trying to figure out what we're going to do with them because people don't want them. Three months ago, we would have sold a kidney to get a vaccine. Now we're, it's like they're Bed Bath & Beyond coupons or something. And <laughs> part of the problem is there are a lot of anti-vax holes going around infecting <laughs> our minds with garbage, like uh, this woman, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, who appeared yesterday before the Ohio House of Representatives Health Committee to claim, among other untrue things, that the vaccine somehow turns humans into magnets. There's been people who've long suspected that there was some sort of an interface, yet to be defined, an interface between what's being injected in these shots and all of the 5G towers. Not proven yet, but I'm sure you've seen the pictures all over the internet of people who've had these shots and now they're magnetized. They can put a key on their forehead, it sticks. They can put spoons and forks all over them and they can stick because now we think that there's a metal piece to that. All right, yes. You'd think 5G was a scam too if no one wanted to call you on the phone. But <laughs> Dr. Tenpenny wasn't the only one to weigh in with her 10 cents. The house in Ohio got a live demonstration of how this human magnetism works. Yes, vaccines do harm people. By the way, so I just found out something when I was on lunch, and I wanted to show it to you. We were talking about Dr. Tenpenny's testimony about magnetic vaccine crystals. So this is what I found out. So I have a key and a bobby pin here. Explain to me why the key sticks to me. It sticks to my neck, too. I got this. Yeah, so if somebody can explain this, that would be great. 
Yeah. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Do you have kids, and how can we save them from you? <laughs> right, Guillermo? You mean? So, you know, the Olympics are supposed to start next month in Tokyo, whether the people of Japan want them to or not. It would seem they do not want them to. There's not a lot of vaccination happening there, but the Olympics are going forward anyway. You know, I've wanted to compete in the Olympics ever since, I think, ever since I saw Lionel Richie uh, sing all night long at the closing ceremonies in 84. So, <laughs> while everyone else has been at home baking banana bread, Guillermo and I have been in training, serious training. We learned to speed walk, we did cartwheels, kind of, with Gabby Douglas, and uh, while those did not work out at all, we are very upbeat about our newfound ability to fence. Where is he? What's up, guys? How you doing? I'm good. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> I gotta be careful with nice this. <laughs> I keep... This is loaded. Exactly. Well, thanks for having us here at the fencing center. I can't believe there's a center for fencing. I didn't know there were enough people to, to fill a center. Yeah, bro, they got them all over the place. They're is all over bro the place. some kind of fencing term? Is it B-R-E-A-U-X? <laughs> like, bro, yeah, no. it's, a, it's yeah. from the French term. Breh. Breh. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So this sport comes from French? Yeah, but now we got all over the world. Uh, in the U.S. right now, our team is currently ranked number one in the world going into the Olympics. Congratulations. Thank yeah, you. So good. You uh, medaled in the Olympics. Yes. Uh, I got two medals in Rio, one silver in the individual, one bronze in team, and we just won the world championships in 2019 uh, as a team. So nice. why don't I bring my teammate in, Nick? Yeah, bring in Nick. Okay. Hi, Nick. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's up, bro? What's up? Why is it called fencing? It comes from the French word escrime. Ice cream? Ice cream, exactly. Listen, when I come from, if you say, oh, let's go fencing, we're gonna jump the fence, you know, we're gonna like, cross the board, jump the fence to the other side, and then get it. We don't have fencing like this. This is a fancy sport, right? This is a great big. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. We should work this out at the comedy store. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Um, it's a French thing. It goes back a long time. It has, and correct me if I'm wrong, no practical use now. If there's a zombie apocalypse, we're probably pretty well suited with like a machete or something. I don't think so. I may, yeah, you'd have to switch to machete. Is machete part of yeah. the sport? No. Machete is no. what we use in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You add that to the bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what's the first step? How do you get into this? So, first thing, we'll teach you the on guard stance. Okay. So, what you want to do is you go put your feet at 90 degrees like this, mm -hmm. and then just bring your front foot to like about shoulder width, like that, and then bend your knees a little bit. Perfect. Uh, you guys look like naturals already. So if you want to go forward, you do something called an advance. Step forward, and then bring your back foot. One, yeah, and then boom. Yeah, exactly. And the opposite would be a retreat. And then the most important thing is when you're ready to try and attack your opponent, you do something called a lunge. So you just go like that. I've seen that in the movies. Exactly. That one I know. That's pretty good for someone who's never done a lunge before. Which country is the best at fencing? Right now, we're ranked number one in the world as a team. What Don't about care. the Latinos, the Mexican? Are they they're okay? They're all right. They send a guy in our event, and you know, in the Olympics, I might actually end up matching up with them. I have a 50 oh, 50 percent chance. Win. I bet you you're gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does have no chance. He's gonna win. They have a whole different definition of fencing, right, yeah, Guillermo? I, I How's yeah, that joke go again? How's that bit go? No, we say, hey, let's go fencing. We jump the fence, right, and right, that's right. it. We'll work it out. Okay. <laughs> all right. And this is interesting. There's actually a uh, a plug that goes into. Is this the sword? The foil, yeah. It's weird, it's like an electric blanket or something. Exactly, it's an electric vest. It'll tell you whether or not you hit the target. Oh, wow. Okay, all right. From there, it'll hook up to the back of your lame into one of these reels. Oh, I'm actually connected to you're gonna, Yeah, you're gonna get connected. <laughs> Can I test that on him? So now we're hooked up to electricity and that oh, yeah. you see the indicates point? that you got me. Wow, how about that? If it starts raining or something, we will die, right? We will fry. I mean, that's why we're indoors. All right, bro, let's do this, bro. <laughs> how did you guys get into this? It's actually kind of a coincidence, but both of our parents are coaches. My dad was a three-time Olympian for the US team. So it runs in your family. I guess so, yeah. My sister also just qualified for oh, this wow. team for her first Olympic Games. You know what runs in my family? Eczema. Okay, <laughs> let's see how you do this. <laughs> Whoa, 
it's surprisingly violent, I have to say. Yeah. Oh my God. Would you consider yourselves to be swashbucklers? No, nah, really not. No. It's like, hey, you touched a nerve there, I think. <laughs> Does anyone actually say touche? Do you just say touche? It's I not touche? Unless my French is completely wrong? Well, you must know. I mean, the refs say touche. 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 We're going to start a, um, a fencing fan club called the Touche Bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready, Jimmy? I'm ready, Guillermo. Fence. Oh, I think the fact that my arm is eight inches longer than his is yeah. going to be a bit of an advantage. Yeah. You're going to have to be crafty gear. I'm going yeah, to get in here. Yeah, super fast. Yeah, you're super right. fast. Ready? Fence. And hit him, I hit him. Oh, Jimmy. Fence. <laughs> hey, but I touched him first. Guillermo, you actually have to hit him harder. Oh, I want to have a job on Monday. What about for this one, if we have our graphics team make these into lightsabers? Wouldn't that be awesome? You want to do that? We do. First of all, do you think it's too late for us to make the team? I mean, we just solidified our team not that long ago. So we should focus on 2024? Yeah, hopefully, you know, you'll be competing with us for 2024. Well, thanks, guys. Um, I will be watching you at the Olympics now. This is exciting to know somebody and to be able to put a face to this. Appreciate you. that. And good luck, guys. Thank you. All right, thanks. it's good, it's fast. And I like it now. It's like you gotta move fast and you gotta like eyes on the up and it's, it's good. It's a great description of it. Guillermo, you had fun? Yeah, I had a lot of fun, Jimmy. Now I learn the, what fencing means. Because where you come from, it's different, right? Yeah, where I come from, fencing. Where I come from, fencing is where you jump the fence over the border. Okay, uh, uh. In Mexico, we use machete to fight, not a foil. These are fencing jokes. Well, guys, I'm getting the light. Thank you and good night. Congratulations on making it to the end of a YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.